Hey everyone, um, I just was feeling a little bit lonely today as I was painting. So I'm getting ready to um, start um, let's see here. Okay, hi Sarah. Um, I am going to paint these antlers today, so I just thought you guys might like to paint along with me or watch or listen, whatever you want. I'm just going to teach you how I go about painting and sketching my watercolors. So I'm painting these antlers. This picture was given to me. <laughs> hi sis. Um, this, this picture was given to me by um, Heather Thompson. She is the amazing person behind Alpine Baby Company and she has this amazing moose skull and antlers in her house. So I'm going to draw these and paint them and feel free to stick around. So I have the live feed on another like iPad next to me so I can see if you guys have questions or anything like that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start looking at proportions here. I'm noticing that there's kind of a triangle here between the, the tips of the antlers and the lowest point of the skull. So I'm going to just start there. It's almost like an equilateral triangle. So just to position this on my paper um, properly. So let's say the bottom of the skull is about right there. The tip might be a little bit different very tip of the antlers up here and then we have the other tip kind of about there so feel free to like get out your pencil and paper and sketch along with me I would love that and if you're coming to this later after it's posted on my um, Instagram feed I would love for you to let me know if you paint these along with me. So, um, let's see, we have our skull is like right about here. And what's interesting about this picture is it's taken from an angle, so it's not perfectly symmetrical, which I kind of love. I love painting things like that. So, we are going to just start sketching shapes. And like the biggest thing when you're drawing and painting is just to look at shapes. I'm going to turn off my notifications here. Um, oops. Yeah, that'll work. I don't need internet on that one. Um, so I just like see this shape. It's kind of almost like a, almost like a rectangle shape. And I just start blocking shapes in. Um, and I'm going to paint, um, this is on hot press watercolor paper. So it's very friendly to being erased. Um, so I will erase a lot of these lines before I'm done. Um, but I'm just kind of watching like angles and how shapes interact with each other. I'm not thinking about that this is a skull at all. Um, I'm looking at, you know, this looks about the same distance as this. So I'm just trying to just block these shapes in really quick. And I'm kind of even looking at this shape. It's almost like a W, right? So I want this kind of to look like a W. And this side of the W is a little bit more straight up than this one. So kind of like that. And then just the basic shape here Now, I was thinking of doing this in like watercolory gouache, but I could also do this in pen and ink. So, what do you guys think? What should I do this? Should I do pen and ink on this or should I do should I paint it with watercolor gouache technique um after it's sketched? What do you think? Let me know if you have an opinion about that um or what you'd like to see. Um So, 
our skull again is not perfectly centered here. We're seeing the left side and the left eye socket, but we're not seeing that over here. So it's a little bit asymmetrical, which I think makes it a little bit more interesting. We have this shape here that's like an oval. Oh, Sarah, yes, I could do pen and ink and watercolor. Um, yeah, let me, I'll fill it in with watercolor first and then I can do the ink over the top. Or I could do ink first, I'm not really sure. Um, but today, I do have some antlers coming out in a pattern soon, which I'm really excited about. But today, I'm just kind of playing around because I feel like if I'm doing every drawing that I do for something I'm going to sell, it gets kind of kind of becomes a drag after a while. So I just found this so interesting. And again, thank you, Heather, for taking this picture for me. And so we see there's kind of a line that comes down like this. So I'm going to just kind of follow that line down to get an idea here. Let's see. This is kind of like a U shape. I can already see my, my shape's not quite right here. And I'm kind of all over the place. I'm just blocking these shapes in and getting proportions right because no matter how you finish your painting out like you can do it really sketchy really different it doesn't have to be like a photograph right getting proportions right will always help it make look um, better even if you're going to finish it out like a really like illustrative way like even like a cartoon or something getting the per the perspective and the shapes right will really help okay so this is kind of like a u this is kind of like a v so i'm kind of paying attention and just how these na this negative space interacts a negative space is the space between the, the object you're drawing so i can see them a little bit off here kind of comes out like that and I don't know, you guys, like, I'm feeling the need to teach a little bit, like, some of this stuff, make it more accessible for people to become good illustrators. Um, and then I'm going to, I'm looking, I have looked at this shape here. I want to look at how this shape comes out. It's almost like toes or something, you know? So I'm looking at this shape. I've got that in there. I'm going to kind of draw out to the tips of where this is so I can get these right because antlers you know this can be hard but if you break it down it's not hard and again if you're just looking at shapes and negative space and you're not really thinking about oh this is a moose head and antlers it takes the pressure off you know so anyway what I was saying I'm all over the place here I apologize but what I was saying is if you guys want me to talk a little bit more about how I do my illustrations, um, like how I digitize them into patterns, like I would love to know what you want to know about my process. Because um, I've been teaching a little bit here and there, just one-on-one -on -one making videos for people that ask me. Um, but I feel like I could probably create something that's a little more wide-ranging if I know what you want to learn so oh thank you hi Lenka thank you so much she said looks great Stacy and my my sister Sarah Julianne that's on here that's my sister she's amazing she said I think that would look really neat to have the pen sketching over top of the watercolor well that's awesome I haven't done that actually yet in this like phase of my art career so we'll give that a shot it might take a few different lives to get that all done but we can do it for sure 
So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll make sure and glance over at those every once in a while. But as we go, you know, you can see this is starting to take shape. And if you kind of look like this shape here, we're drawing this shape here. So here, and then this kind of comes out and in, and then we have these little snaggles on top. And they don't have to be perfect, you know, just doesn't have to be the exact same number as long as the overall picture is looking good, you know? So I'm gonna go ahead and move back over here by the skull, sketch this out a little bit more. Let's see, so look, that's looking pretty good. I don't really need to erase anything. I love drawing nature um, animals, it's just, I feel like I just get such an appreciation for every creature I draw, whether it's the skull and the anatomy and this almost sculptural quality of this skull. You know, and when you draw bones, actually, you get a really good sense for the anatomy of an animal. Um, so it's really interesting change to draw a skull instead of a live critter so yeah and I fully realize anybody who jumps on might not be able to stay on the whole time that's totally fine um, if you have any opinions or thoughts or if you just want to sit down with your paints and paint with me later let me know like let me know if you want me to like start a YouTube channel and do some painting lessons on YouTube um, I feel like this year I've really my paintings have taken on like a much more authentic quality um, and I've learned how to really pay attention to form and shape and perspective and things like that. So I'm really always happy to share any information I have with my fellow artists to help. I feel like so many really great creative people feel like they're not very confident with painting and drawing, especially on paper. And if I can help someone get more confident, I would love that. It'd make me so happy to help somebody have a breakthrough like I did this year and it was just through like a lot of practice and just learning how to see things um, really kind of helped me have that breakthrough this is just so cool how many of you I know my sister has um, how many of you have seen a moose in person I would love to know if any of you have encountered a moose in the wild or um, you know seen one from afar or up close we where I grew up in Montana we used to get moose in our yard all the time and we didn't necessarily live like right in the wilderness or anything we lived at the edge of our town but we get moose coming down from the mountains and especially in the winter time. And moose are nocturnal, so they're awake at night and they love to come down and eat up my mom's trees that she planted. They would come and strip all the bark off her trees, which where we lived, um, we didn't grow trees very fast. It was really cold. We lived right up on the Continental Divide, so right about 6,000 feet above sea level. And sometimes we would go outside to start our cars or something in the winter, and you'd walk around the corner, and there'd be a big old moose munching away <laughs> on some trees. And, uh, you know, it was kind of scary because moose, they can't see very well, and if they're afraid, they'll charge you, and they can really hurt you. So... You have to be really careful 
even though they're so dopey and cute looking. But yeah, it was kind of, they were kind of our neighbors, I guess you could say, growing up, which was really cool. Sometimes you get a big bull moose with antlers. Sometimes you'd have a cow moose with her babies. And they're just so tall, they could just step right over top of our fence. And yeah, it was crazy. But a very unique experience, very cool. So, all right, this is looking pretty good. I'm not too concerned about where this is at on my page or anything, because I might use it in a design, I might not. Ooh, that's not quite right, but we're gonna just call that good anyway, it's okay, if everything doesn't line up perfectly. Can't get too perfectionistic about it. Hi, Rishma. Welcome. Um, I'm painting um, some moose antlers and a skull, and I'm inviting anyone to have input on how I do this. Someone asked if I could do this in ink and watercolors, so we're gonna give that a shot. And I'm just kind of explaining how I draw how I sketch out my sketches and then we'll talk a little bit about how I mix my colors but I think I've pretty much got my sketch done it's pretty good um, yeah I think we're pretty close so what I do next because I'm going to be painting it I'm gonna go through and refine all my lines and make them a little bit lighter because I don't like especially because this is kind of light I don't want it to muddy up my paints so I just kind of leave like a real faint line to let me know you know where to paint what so I'll erase my line and then just go over it really light like that Love this eraser. Um, it's a Pentel Click eraser. Oh, there are my dogs barking. I think the garbage man, maybe. Hey, pups. Thank you. Thank you for telling me. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm just going around and just kind of finalizing my lines how I want them getting any of this kind of dark, messy sketch out of the way. Anyway, this Pentel Click Eraser, I've been using this, I use it in college. I went to engineering school and I have a degree in engineering and we use this all the time like to erase all of our math calculations and stuff like that. And then my favorite drawing pencil is this uh, good old number two Ticonderoga pencil. I just love it. It's like the best, um, it's just like the best hardness, softness, and it erases so nicely. And it's just like your typical like pencils, you know, for your schoolwork. It's not even an artist pencil. I just love it. So just cleaning this up and then we'll start painting. And, um, I mentioned earlier I like to paint in like a watercolor style so like really transparent um, or translucent but I use gouache oh my gosh there's a little bug in here <laughs> it's winter time and I have a gnat on my desk um, yeah that's pretty good but the good thing is so gouache, I love gouache paint. It's, you can layer it like acrylics and it's, you can make it opaque if you want to, but you can also paint like with like watercolor. So I've been using it like watercolor and then it lets me erase a lot of my lines nicely. So, but I do like on light colored drawings, um, I like to get rid of some of my pencil so it doesn't muddy up my colors um, when I'm 
get it wet. So. So anyway, that's probably good enough for now. Let's get some of this. I just don't want to confuse myself also, you know, with my lines, some of my sketch lines. I don't want to confuse myself later when I'm painting. And I would say my style is much more like of an illustrative style, almost like I'm using markers or something. Um, it's a little bit sketchy. So there's our sketch. So I'll show you my really messy palette. This is my messy, messy palette. Um, <laughs> my paint's falling off of it. Um, but I just have my main colors from my gouache set, which is right here. Let me see if I can reach it without tipping something over. I use these Holbein, Holbein Artist Gouache. Um, it's just a set of 12. You can get them on Amazon. They're really, really nice. You don't have to use a whole lot. And what I like about these pure gouache, not acrylic gouache, is that they actually are, you're able to reactivate them once they dry. With acrylic gouache, once they dry, you can't use them anymore. So um, I like the option of being able to just reactivate dry paint. Like I have some just dry paint. And then for my highlights, I can either use, I have this designer's gouache from Winsor & Newton, white. I get a bigger tube usually, um, just because sometimes you use it more often, and these ones are a little spendy, but they're worth it. And then I also use this Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White Ink. Um, it's really, really nice and opaque, and it's also water-based, and you can also reactivate it when it's dry. So I might go back in and do some highlights on darker spots or something like that. And that's something you can't do with watercolor, but you can do with gouache, which I really love. So we need to decide what color we want to use for our shadows. Um, I think I'm going to use maybe a, maybe a purple, purpley blue maybe for my shadows. So I'm going to just grab my favorite paintbrush. I don't even know what kind of paintbrush this is because it's worn off. It's not an expensive one though, I can tell you that. But I generally use round paint brushes because you can make very thin lines or very thick lines with them. And I see a couple more people. Oh, hi, Christian. Um, I'm doing a painting class. <laughs> I actually made a little recording for Christian, um, Dear Fiorella Design, my good friend in Australia. And so, yeah, Christian, you're my inspiration for this little art lesson that I'm putting on. Um, so anyway, I'm getting ready to just kind of mix up. I have these already mixed up for another project I'm working on, so I'm just going to go ahead and use them. For my shadows and my skull, I'm going to use maybe a purple or a green or maybe a little bit of both, just to make it a little bit more fun. So I'm using, this is, I never know the names of these colors. So Ultramarine Deep, I'll make like a purple. I'll mix that maybe with a little bit of this crimson -y red, which is called Carmine up here. And I like mix my colors and get them all gross and it's okay because you can rinse them off. It's no big deal. Oh, that's a little red. I guess you can't really see what I'm doing, huh? Sorry. So, I just mess around with this till I get the right color. And one good tip, like if you're mixing, um, if you look at the color wheel and you're mixing warm colors together, they'll get like kind of more vibrant. And if you want to mute them down, you just add a small amount of color of the complementary color, which is the color across the color wheel. So like, this is kind of warm. Red and blue aren't really complementary, but if I wanted to, like purple and yellow are complementary. So if I wanted to mute my purple down a little bit um, and not make it so bright, I would add a touch of yellow to it. So if I grab some yellow 
and just mix it in there. You can see it turns it toward brown. It turns it, mutes it a little bit. That's actually kind of a lot of yellow, but that's kind of what happens there. So that actually might be a really good color for the antlers. Um, so I'm gonna just keep adding some blue. Now, I like this green. This is called Permanent Green Deep. Just get it kind of like a nice turquoisey color, kind of like water or ice or something. This is like a cerulean, it's called turquoise blue. And that's nice and vivid, so I might want to just mute that down a little bit. So to mute that down, blue and red are, or blue and orange are complementary. Green and red are complementary, so I could add a little bit of this kind of orangey color, and it just kind of mutes it a little bit, which is kind of nice. So we're going to start with those colors on our skull. And I apologize, my palette's kind of off the view of the, the circle here, or the, the view of my painting, but you can just trust me, you saw those. Let me mix those colors. So I'm just going to go in. What I like to do is I like to start with like my darkest darks and just block those in. Maybe I'll put a little purple in there. So his little eye socket here is really dark. And that is a little bit watery. So I'm going to blot my brush off on my trusty rag here. And then I'm going to go ahead and do all of this in purple for now, just even the, the antlers themselves. So I'm just looking for all the very darkest darks. Looks like this is really dark here. And just start coloring them in, you know. And what I think makes the, a, a great painting, no matter what colors you use, um, is value contrast. So you want to have dark darks and light lights and everything in between and have them match up relative to one another. So like you can see like in here is not the darkest dark. So I'll put like in my mid-tone is like that color. It's a little bit up here. And so I'm thinking of this as though it's in black and white. I might just make this whole thing purple and green. I think that might look really cool. Um, and I like to try and take care on the lightest lights. Like these tips here are very light here. Um, and the, the very highlights of the skull, I try to leave that paper color. Even though I'm using gouache and I can come back in with white, I try to leave that paper color because it's never quite as bright as paper when you put white back in. So just filling in shadows right now. And any strokes I make, I try to make in the, you know, if it's fur on an animal, I try to make my strokes match the direction of their fur or match the direction of these lines on the antlers. Um, you know, even if you can't really see them at first, because I feel like it does, you know, put in the assumption of line and movement and stuff, and you can come back in and clean that up later. But I like to always try to follow the grain of what it, whatever it is that I'm painting. And again, you're just filling in shapes. Like, I like to think of shadows as shapes. Um... And just keep looking for these dark darks. And if you're not dark anymore, like this is getting a little light, just pick up a little bit more paint. And there's just some really beautiful lines. Um, like there's some just really pretty lines on um, these antlers that you can paint. It adds a lot of movement. And I don't know why I do this. I started painting on the right-hand side, but 
if I'm not careful, I'll drag my hand through wet paint. So I usually like to try to go left to right, but it seems like I don't always do that. Hi, Jacqueline. <laughs> I'm uh, doing a painting, sort of painting lesson, sort of paint with me. Uh, fun little live. Feeling a little bit uh, all by myself today. So I'm glad you guys have joined in and are watching a little bit. So right now, as I was mentioning before, I'm kind of just filling in the darkest darks on my painting. Hey, I have six people in here. That's so cool. Thank you guys for being here. It's nice. Um, and I mean, of course, like you've got other things to do, but it's really neat to like jump on a live and be talking to you and having you there doing what you're doing. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions about what I'm doing, just let me know. Oh, Sarah. Oh my gosh. I would actually love that so much if you would ship your kids over to me. I love them. I want to show you guys. I'm going to show you this because they're sitting right here. But I just made these pajamas. I made like a whole stack of pajamas. So Jacqueline's here and my sister Sarah's here. I made um, these pajamas over the weekend. Aren't these cute? Um... For Christmas these are for Jacqueline's kids and this is her I don't want to put them in the paint this is her pattern for one of her Christmas collections it's so cute and this is another pattern from her Christmas collection so I made some cute little jammies out of her adorable <laughs> her adorable patterns and then um Oh, Christiane. Oh, thank you, Brittany. Brittany is my friend from my mentorship, Elizabeth and Rianne. She's so talented. I'm so glad you're here. Dear, dear Fiorella, that's Christiane, my friend. Then I made these out of my uh, Christmas collection for my sister's kids. So yes, Sarah, anytime you would like to ship your children, they have, I have like two bedrooms for them or whatever. Um, Auntie Stacy will play Legos and whatever they want. My sister has two kids. They are the cutest. Their names are MJ and Sam. And MJ is going to be five, right? In January, Sarah. And um, this kid is brilliantly smart and so interested in things. And he's so fun to play with. But he's got a lot of energy, so... What ends up happening is the adults end up <laughs> taking turns with him because he's so, um, he's so, uh, he's just got a lot of energy, <laughs> right, Sarah? Um, anyway, getting back to this, um, just painting in these darks and it, you know, the messy middle, this doesn't look like much of anything yet, but. It will look cool when we're all done. And my style just tends to be kind of sketchy. That's just what I do. I'm not like a loose watercolor person at all. I really applaud and admire people who can do loose watercolors. I think I'll probably try doing it just for the sake of learning. But yeah, it's just not what I do usually. Um, and that's okay. You gotta find your your own way of doing things, you know, so you stand out. Um, so I think these darks, I'm not going to do all of this yet. Um, I think this might be a good place. These might be a good place to add highlights in later. So I'm going to go in with like my green a little bit. I'm going to try and use blue and green as my colors. And just do kind of a mid wash in here just to kind of build this color in. I have coffee too, Christian, by the way. See? It just reminded me. I need to drink it because when I don't, when I paint, I forget that I have it. 
powder. Mm. Delicious. I was so lucky to have Christiane and Dee from Deanne Strange Design at my house in September from Australia. Um, we had the funnest time. It was just awesome. And then we went to our mentorship retreat over in Park City. And Brittany was there. And it was so awesome. Like, these ladies, I cannot tell you enough Actually, I should tell you more about them while we're while we're painting. And if you have questions about what I'm doing, just let me know. But I'm just chatting. This is like you're at my house. Would you like a cup of coffee? We'll just chit chat. Um but in September, I'm in a mentorship that's been all year. It ends the end of this year. Um I've been in a mentorship with Mindy Young of Indie Bloom Design and Mindy's amazing. Any of you that are in surface pattern world know her. She's so awesome. And she had us go to a retreat in Park City in September. And so there are two amazing women from Australia in the mentorship. And I said, you guys, come to my house first. Like, we'll drive over because I'm only about five hours from Park City in Boise. And so they came over and we went up to our cabin and went fishing and my car broke down but it was fine we got a rental car <laughs> anyway we had a great time and I I'm just so happy that I've met all these amazing women um so the other people that are in our mentorship so we have let's see I probably shouldn't try to name everyone off off my memory I feel like I don't know their Instagram handles always correctly but Elizabeth and Rianne is Brittany. Her stuff is beautiful. Actually, I should just do... Um, I have some fabric that I've ordered from all these amazing ladies um, to make baby blankets for our hospital for Christmas. And so maybe I'll do a little story that shows off their fabric because they're all so talented. And I'm so, so glad to know them. Um, but yeah, I want to, there, we had one day at our mentorship where we all just sat and painted and visited. And I feel like I would love to like do a zoom call that's like this. Yes. It was incredible. Wasn't it? Christiane. Um, I would love to do like a zoom where we all sit and paint and talk and visit just like we did at our mentorship retreat when we're all in the same room, but we're from all over the world. It's crazy. Like feel like I have all these best friends but none of them live near me um so maybe we'll do maybe we'll do some highlights or something in like red or orange or something on this yes we need a virtual paint party I think we need to do it like once a month or something and, and whoever can make it just shows up and we all paint together. We could like give each other lessons if we wanted, or we could just work on our own paint project, but just have our virtual paint party kind of like this, but like I can hear you guys instead of just me talking the whole time. All right, let's see. Maybe put a little bit of mid-tones on the skull here. I hope you guys can see this okay. Yeah, I would love a virtual paint party. Um, I need to figure out from you guys, like, anybody who wants to join it, really. Um, I would love to do, like, a paint with me live situation. So maybe I should set that up after the new year maybe so anybody in here do you have any like art goals that you're setting for next year or any goals really even if you're not an artist because it doesn't mean you're an artist or you're doing art for a living or anything if you're in here has anyone worked on their goals for next year and want to share them I'd love to hear them um I've set a few goals 
um, around work I want to make and stuff like that and, you know, haven't quite dialed it in. But I do want to release some smaller surface pattern collections more often for people, so, like, I'm putting new stuff out there more often instead of it taking me so long. I feel like it takes me a long time to finish up a, a pattern collection. Mainly because I get stuck in this phase of painting and I just love it so much that I just never want to stop doing it and getting moving on to the the next phase of actually putting them in patterns <laughs> for fabric. Which I love that phase too, but I don't know. I just kind of get off in la-la land a little bit with that, so... Hi Maureen, thanks for joining us. I'm just painting and chatting and anybody who wants to talk or leave a comment, I'm looking over at your comments when I can because I have them on a different iPad. I stole my husband's iPad to use to monitor comments because I'm filming this with my iPhone and I'm looking at my reference photo on my iPad. <laughs> So my husband's iPad is over to the left so I can see what you guys are saying because my iPhone's up above me and I can't see what's going on up there. So I hope that's okay. Um, anyway, yeah. So did you guys all have a good weekend? What did you do this weekend? Anything fun or exciting? Do you guys like watch football or... Um, my husband's like a huge Kansas City Chiefs fan. He's been a fan of the Chiefs for like his entire life. I think since like 1970, 1970, <laughs> um, when they were like a brand new football team. And so it's been good to see them win the Super Bowl and stuff, but they've been playing kind of terribly. And I know always how well they're doing because I don't really watch it that much I can't stay focused on a football game I get bored I guess um but I always know when they're not doing so well because it gets real quiet otherwise he's hooting and hollering in the other room because they're doing well or they're making a touchdown and he's he's funny he gets really into it and so he was awfully quiet yesterday and I was like uh-oh they're not doing well. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah. So really, I just wanted to say too, like, it used to confuse me, like, how to choose colors. Like, if I want to make this, like, blue and purple, and this is white and brown, um, how do I dis how do I change that? Well, every color has a dark or a light value. So as long as you're you're using the correct value scale. Like if you turn this into black and white and you turn this into black and white, it would look the same. Um, it doesn't matter what color you use. You can use any color you want. And I know too, like if I put this in, um, if I put this in Illustrator where I do my digitizing, I can change the colors to whatever I want them to. As long as the values are correct, you can you can play around with that later if you decide to digitize it. So I'm just kind of looking and kind of putting shadows in here where I haven't put them in before. And it starts to lift off the page a little bit, which is really cool. But yeah, I love to like maybe give some classes or YouTube tutorials. So I don't know if anybody's interested in that. I don't want to make something that no one's going to watch. But at the same time, if it's something that sounds interesting, I would love to do it. Because um, I really think getting comfortable making art, and I truly firmly believe anyone can be an artist that wants to be and wants to learn the techniques. Art, art is really about learning how to see and some people, you know, in their lives have been told at some point, maybe by even like an art teacher, 
like you're no good at this like you're not an artist and I think that's so sad because we're all artists when we're kids name a kid that doesn't like to draw and then all of a sudden we give up on it or we think we're not good enough and that is such a bunch of baloney it's not true oh thank you Brittany <laughs> she says you know I'll watch anything you make you're so sweet that's so nice. I would love it. But yeah, I feel like there are just so many talented people out there that just never try because someone told them, you're no good at this. And like, usually that person's just full of it. And truly anyone can learn how to see shapes and put them on paper. And I agree, like some people are more they show more of an affinity for it early on in life, but it doesn't mean you don't have talent, you know? If you can drive your car down the road without crashing it, you can be an artist. That's my firm belief. I'll tell you who was a really good artist, my sister. She's an amazing artist, but she's a mama and she's she is also does competitive reining with her horse which is her passion so she doesn't have time for art which is totally understanding she's also an amazing musician like she's so well-rounded in the creative arts it's amazing to me um she played drums and flute in like our high school band I didn't do any of that stuff um but she's she's fantastically um talented in so many ways and she's a nurse she's an amazing nurse um yeah I'm so proud of her let's see all right I think I'm gonna work on the antlers a little bit more now um yeah I think I'll put some purple in there now try that Kind of have like blue seems to be our mid tone and purple is our dark shadow tone. So now I'm gonna just start sketching in these lines. It's just a lot of lines, and I don't know. Maybe this is from when moose grow their antlers and deer grow antlers. They are at first called what's in vel it's called in velvet and they have this like velvety covering to them and it has like a bunch of blood vessels and stuff and I, I wonder if this is like left over from their blood vessels and then they shed that velvet layer anybody knows uh let me know in the comments if you know what that is but it sure makes a really interesting texture that's for sure See, and I love, like, wash, you can layer it, but it's still, you can have, like, a really translucent effect to it, too. So, I've thought of doing a YouTube channel. Um, I don't want to, like, make too many projects for myself, which, because I tend to do that. Um, but I've always thought it would be neat to... Maybe have like a YouTube channel where we just paint and talk and it helps people. Hi Stacy Joe, how are you? I bet you're busy this time of year. Stacy Joe makes these amazing cutting boards for charcuterie. I don't know how you say that word. I'm not very anyway, cheese boards and stuff. They're so cool. Go check her out. Um they're beautiful, but she makes by hand. Um, yeah. And she spells her name like I do. S-T-A-C-I-E, the best way. <laughs> um, yeah. Hopefully. How is everybody doing on their holiday prep? How's that all going for you? Um... I used to have a business where I had to, I sold, you know, 
physical products and Christmas and Father's Day was the biggest, busiest times of year. And I remember just being so worn out after those seasons were over. (laughs) And I will say I don't miss that rush time, even though it's fun. But yeah, I don't miss having all of those things to do with shipping and worrying about shipping. Oh, good. Stacy just finished wrapping her gifts. Good job. I have not wrapped all my gifts. I have a bunch of gifts and I haven't finished shopping yet. But every year, my husband and I go, we have like a little date night and then we kind of go shop. And that's actually tomorrow that we're going to do that. And we kind of split up and like we're shopping for each other and stuff too. So like we'll split up and like go to different stores and do our shopping and kind of turn it into a little little fun evening. So we'll be doing that tomorrow. And I should be I should have all my stuff. Oh no. <laughs> Just dropped my paintbrush. Oh well. Happy little accident, right? <laughs> we'll turn that into something later. Anyway, um Making a little tradition around it has been helpful. I've always had a hard time shopping and getting gifts out on time. I just always feel like I have more time than I do. Um, yeah, so what else is going on? Um... Yeah, anybody, I had asked earlier, but does anybody have any goals or anything they're working on for, like, defining for next year for your business or for your life? I'd love to hear what you want to think about accomplishing maybe next year. If you want to share that, I'd love to hear it. One thing I love about these paints too is they kind of almost reactivate on your paper so you can like soften your lines a little bit by kind of adding a little water to them but these paints I just love them they're so easy to work with they don't separate some paints kind of separate when you mix them together um they don't really do that on the palette which I really love Mixing up a little bit more over here. Off camera, sorry about that. It's hard to capture everything I want to capture. So now I'm going to work on this over here. I'm just kind of getting these kind of scratchy lines. Color's not quite the same. Oh well, it's okay. But yeah, I'm just I'm just doing this drawing for fun today. I just didn't want to feel like this had to be for something. Like it's just for me to kind of unwind and meditate a little bit connect with you guys so do you guys travel for the holidays or do you stay home I am staying home for the holidays I went to my parents house for Thanksgiving which was also my birthday which was awesome but we'll be staying home it's just always a little bit tricky to travel on Christmas. It's never been my favorite. So we'll be staying here in Idaho. And my sister will be at her house in Washington and my parents will be at their house in Montana. It's always just so tricky to drive anywhere in the Northwest during winter. Um, the roads could do anything <laughs> and the storms come through. You just don't know if you can even get home or not. So We'll all be FaceTiming, I think. So what are your plans? Um, I also hope to get up to our cabin sometime between Christmas and New Year. Our cabin's about an hour and a half away up in the mountains. And I'll do a little painting. I have a cool painting desk up there that we've set up. 
and it's so nice because there's no internet or anything up there, no cell signal, no t no phone, so you're truly away from everything, and it's just so great. I love it. So, we also have like some little lines that go back and forth too, I just noticed. So, there's like some scratches. Sometimes these moose, they, they scratch their antlers on trees and stuff. I think to mark their territory or get the velvet off, I don't know. Um, yeah. So now, just kind of filling in the rest of these. I'm gonna erase my pencil line, so I wanna make sure I've defined everything with paint. And then after this, I will, once everything kind of dries, I will add some some ink to this to, to define it a little bit more. Um, Cause I asked at the beginning if I should just do paint or if I should do pen and ink and my sister said, why don't you do both? And I thought, well, why don't I? That's a great idea. So that's what I'll be doing. Yeah, so I think that's looking pretty good. I think I'm going to leave that light because those are a light color. And we'll come back in with some ink. Yeah, to define that. Looks kind of neat. All right, now I'm gonna grab I have a lot of pens and things. I really like these pigment liners from Statler. Just grab. I have a bunch of different sizes. I think this size will be good. Yeah, that should be really good. These are waterproof. So, um, you know, if you painted over them, you'd be okay. Um, and I kind of just try and help this dry a little bit. Basically, they won't bleed when they come in contact with water. So, this is pretty dry. I don't feel like I'm going to smear anything. So, we'll just start over on the left here. I'm just gonna start making some little scratchy, scratchy lines. Just kind of making some more definition. And you know, sometimes, sometimes it's easy to overwork stuff, so I don't really want to overwork my I don't want to add too much that's gonna overpower my paint so I just usually start by you know kind of outlining it I guess but not everything not like one unbroken line just keeping it a little bit sketchy to kind of help because these are kind of rough um, so I kind of want people to feel the texture whenever I add a line I want people to feel the texture of the real item through that line. And one good rule of thumb is to just go ahead and kind of fill in those darker darks. So we're kind of staying on the shadowy side, I guess, which is the left side. So I just kind of fill those in first just to see what happens. So it's like the bottom and the left because the light's kind of coming from this direction. So we're kind of adding a little bit of definition, which is kind of neat. Um, I'll probably even add a little bit of line on these extra rough here. 
it just feels good to be making art for making art's sake and not trying to market it or something. And I feel like I have to do that sometimes just for appreciation's sake, you know? Because we get, especially when you have a business and you really want to be successful, you're always thinking about, like, what can I make next? You know, that's gonna do well for my audience and stuff. And I feel like this time of year can be so busy, but it's also a really good time to slow down and get really introspective about kind of meditative art making. Just kind of leaning into your art as a way to wind down a little bit. And let me tell you a story. <laughs> the beginning of this year, I had pretty much painted everything in black and white up to that point. Like, I was actually kind of terrified of color. Like, I hadn't painted in color in a long time. So I painted, like, black ink and just really paid attention to values. And then, you know, I just started goofing around with color and I just kept practicing and practicing and there's really no substitute for practice and you don't have to show anyone your work you know I think people feel like maybe everything they make someone has to see it it's like nope you can crumple it up and throw it away if you don't like it so I kind of had a goal this year to make a certain number of just pieces of art I think it was 200 pieces of art so I really need to go count. I think I did it though. Just having like low stakes is so important to getting better. Not feeling it has to look like anything, you know? Oh, thank you, Sarah. She said, I like the ink over the watercolor. Well, this is a great idea, so thanks for suggesting it. It kind of really makes things pop, doesn't it? It was a great idea. Then when I'm making shadows, um, you just do a little hatching. Just some lines next to each other. I don't want to cover up all my color, but sometimes it's nice to add a little bit of and this is actually covering this up so I don't really even know what that looks like so we're just gonna pretend that's what that looks like I have no idea who cares it's fine it's fine I have been watching this awesome YouTube channel called vice grip garage and it's this guy, his name is Derek, and he just, he fixes up cars, but he, he will, like, buy a car sight unseen and then go, like, 200, you know, 500 miles from home, fly there. The car will have not started in, like, 20 years, and um, he'll get it running and drive it, like, 500 miles home. Like, he had this one, he did a Ford Model A that was, like, a 1920-something and he drove it like 700 miles or something to get home. It was crazy. That is not a car you drive 700 miles every, anywhere, even when it was new. But anyway, he has all these catchphrases and things that he says. And he's from North Dakota, Minnesota, like my dad. And he just remi <laughs> reminds me of my dad. Um, but he's always like, it's fine. And so the other day I, I said something. And I said, it's fine. And Craig goes... My husband, he's like, okay, Derek, because we watch the show all the time at home. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, totally picking up his, but he has this YouTube channel and he'll always be like, just bleep bloop it down below, like make a comment, <laughs> just bleep bloop it. Tell me what you want me to do with this car. So funny. And he calls, you know, when I was an engineer, everyone always made fun of me, like my fellow engineers made fun of me, because I would say stuff like, oh, get me that thingy, 
I would never know the like real name of whatever it was, like some tool or whatever they were supposed to use. Oh, grab me that thingy, you know that thingy? That silver thingy. And so I love this show because Derek is always like, he calls the alternator on a car, he calls it the charging whirler and like the battery, he calls it the lightning cube. And I love all the names that he gives things that are not the proper name. It just makes me happy. Okay, you guys, this is getting really close. What do you think? Thank you for being with me, for sticking with me while I've been drawing this. I hope it's been, like, relaxing at the very least to let, listen to me blab my face and talk about stuff to the ethernet or the, inter the interwebs. What am I saying? Ethernet. Um, yeah, this has been really cool. So bleep bloop it down below if you want me to do this more often. Or start a YouTube channel or something about painting in the new year. Because I'm thinking about it. And if you want me to do that, what do you want me to paint? What do you want to learn about? I'd say my specialty is animals, like that's my favorite. So I'm definitely going to paint some animals in there. Christiane, are you still here? If you are, how are your boys? Are they wrestling still? You said earlier, I'm watching my boys wrestle. They're so cute. Her boys are so adorable. They're so busy keep Christian very busy. Oh, you guys, look at that. That looks pretty good. I think I'm going to go in and erase some of my pencil lines, which you might not be able to see, but when you do that and you take the time and go in and erase, it really kind of cleans everything up nice. So... I didn't know how that was going to turn out when I started, and it's always kind of fun to see what happens, like when you decide to use purple and blue for your shadows. There's our little moose skull. So there you go. Thank you, Sarah. I'm glad you stuck around. Um, and thanks for giving me ideas about the the ink and and the watercolor together. Yes, I could add some more colors. Um, I think I'm going to be done for now, but I might come back to this one later. I feel like I could use some warm colors, like some reds or something. So maybe uh, we'll do that. But I think I'm going to say goodbye for now. And I hope you all have a good rest of your day. Sarah, FaceTime me anytime. I'd love to see those kiddos. So um, I will talk to you later. And if I don't jump on here again, I hope you guys all have a nice holiday. And uh, we'll see you soon. Okay? Bye.